J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter series, is hardly a moral philosopher, but she did make a profound statement about contemporary society. Appealing to reason hardly helps. If we want to define sex, reason tells us the best answer is to speak about chromosomes found in virtually every cell of the human body. God created humans to have 23 pairs of chromosomes, with the 23rd pair being the sex chromosome that differs between male and female. Females have two X chromosomes, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. This is an irrefutable scientific fact. Any reasonable individual, especially government officials, should be able to define male and female. It is not something that an individual determines, nor is it something that changes according to our mood on a given day. It is a biological fact. Those who deny the facts of science and prefer to define sex on the basis of an ideology are tyrants and want everyone to go along with their madness. Please, you can believe in your madness, but don't judge me a hater because I refuse to go along with your madness. When a 28-year-old confused and angry person identifying as transgender shot up a Tennessee school in March, killing three children and three adults, the follow-up on this terrible tragedy took an odd turn. One by one, Media outlets rushed to apologize for misgendering the shooter who, they explained, had been born female but had recently begun identifying as male. The madness has penetrated the highest ranks of leadership in America. Representative Andrew Clyde, Republican from Georgia, shared a tense exchange with Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona after Cardona repeatedly refused to define woman or definitively explain the extent of equal access for transgender students under the Biden administration's new Title IX rules. Clyde asked Cardona to defend the proposal by first defining, quote, what is a woman? Cardona dodged the question by replying, our focus at the department is to provide equal access to students, including students who are LGBTQ, access free from discrimination. So what's the definition of a woman? Clyde fired back. You haven't given me that. You haven't answered my question. I think that's almost secondary to the important role that I have as Secretary of Education, Cardona responded. My question is not secondary. My question is very simple, Clyde replied. What does HHS say the definition of a woman is? I lead the Department of Education. And my job is to make sure that all students have access to public education, which includes co-curricular activities, Cardona said. And I think you highlighted the importance of the Title IX and giving students equal access, whether it's scholarship and facilities and participation as well. Okay, so you're not going to answer my question, Clyde said. Do you believe that a biological male who self-identifies as a woman should be allowed to compete in women's sports? Cardona again refused to answer, saying, I believe our focus needs to make sure that all students have access to public education. Now, how does President Joe Biden feel about all of this? Obviously, he doesn't believe in chromosomes. Biden chastised Governor DeSantis of Florida for prohibiting transgender surgery on minors. Biden called that cruel. President Biden also attacked Governor DeSantis for protecting children from transgender mutilation and said, quote, that's close to sinful, close quotes. Florida recently joined a handful of states in banning gender transition surgeries and treatments like puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for minors. In case there is any doubt in anyone's mind about what these draconian treatments do, Governor DeSantis released a very graphic video showing the effects of trans surgeries. It was not a pretty sight. In fact, you might say it is downright abhorrent. Agreeing with the governor is Tulsi Gabbard, who recently left the Democrat Party. Gabbard called trans surgeries, quote, nothing less than child abuse. She blasted Biden for his role in helping drive a 389% increase in mastectomies on little girls. Gabbard said Joe Biden and the Democrats share the same core principles as Nazism 
and Adolf Hitler. Videos that they put out in this series tried to answer questions like, when does a child know they're transgender? The hospital's very director of gender multi-specialty services stated that children, quote, will often know that they're transgender from the moment they have any ability to express themselves. And parents will often tell us this. A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves. And parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically. And actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, or trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, uh, playing with the, quote, opposite gender toys, things like that. A good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb, and they will usually express their gender identity as very young children, some as soon as they can talk. They might say phrases such as, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, or I'm going to be a woman, or I'm going to be a mom. Kids know very, very early. So in the GEMS clinic, we see a variety of young children all the way down to ages two and three, and usually up to the ages of nine. When they come into the clinic, they'll see one of our psychologists and we'll be talking to them about their gender, we'll be talking to their family about how to best support that child and how to make sure that that child has the space and support to explore their gender and uh, do well throughout their development. A gender-affirming hysterectomy is very similar to most hysterectomies that occur. A hysterectomy itself is the removal of the uterus, the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and the fallopian tubes, which are attached to the sides of the uterus. Some gender-affirming hysterectomies will also include the removal of the ovaries, but that's technically a separate procedure called a bilateral oophorectomy. And not every gender-affirming hysterectomy includes that, and people who are getting gender-affirming hysterectomies do not have to have their ovaries removed. Are you kidding me? We're being told by these so-called medical professionals that a five-year-old girl who likes playing with trucks, or in my case, as a young girl who liked martial arts, or a little boy who's interested in his sister's Barbie dolls, that these are actually really cries for medical intervention and possibly irreversible sex change surgery? Gabbard said one of the main reasons she left the Democrat Party is that their agenda of identity politics, quote, directly undermines the traditional democratic values that were expressed so beautifully and clearly by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr that we should judge each other, not based on the color of our skin, but based on our character. Now, what's the lesson in all of this? Well, presidents and government officials need to believe that there are male and female chromosomes and no others. Is that expecting too much of presidents and government officials in America? Am I being unrealistic that government officials publicly acknowledge that there are male and female chromosomes? Strange, isn't it, how the woke left claims that Christians are dangerous. Christians are pro-life, believe in love and marriage between a man and a woman, and raise their kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But we are not dangerous. We believe in male and female chromosomes and no other. Now, what's wrong with that? No matter where you turn these days, progressives are attacking the Judeo-Christian foundations of America and pushing a worldview where right is wrong and good is bad. Parents by the millions send their innocent boys and girls to their local public schools, feeling that their kid's day will be filled with reading, writing, and arithmetic, along with science, history, sports, music, and group fun, and a good dose of American history, just like when they attended school decades ago. Sorry, that's not what happens in American public schools today. When your kids walk through library doors, they can expect to encounter explicit pornography and sexual perversion attractively presented in books such as Gender Queer by Maya Kobabi, which graphically depicts multiple lesbian sex acts and equates the scars of teen mastectomies with cool tattoos. Now, friend, is a teen mastectomy a cool tattoo? President Biden, however, has declared war on male and female chromosomes. In addition to shaking hands with people who aren't there, he issued an official proclamation declaring that transgender Americans, quote, shape our nation's soul and establish March the 31st, 2023 as a transgender day of visibility. 
Biden says he stands for the rights of transgender people, but shockingly wants no jail time for a man who confessed to attacking a church. Transgender suspect Maeve Nota, a man who claims to be a woman, confessed to committing hate crimes against St. Louis Roman Catholic Church in Bellevue, Washington. The damage was estimated to be $30,000. 31-year-old Nota also assaulted a church employee and resisted arrest. In our day of violence, confusion, and rampant madness among progressives, maybe a new requirement for city, state, and government officials should be a scientific answer to the question, do you believe that there are male and female chromosomes? There's nothing funny about any of this. Americans need to wake up. Yes, wake up. Day by day, moment by moment, we are coming under the boot of tyranny, the likes of which we have never seen. I remember several years ago when one of the churches I pastored, I used the phrase, homosexual agenda. One of the ladies in the congregation was very upset that I used the phrase homosexual agenda. She said that was nonsense. Well, there is a homosexual agenda and it is being opposed on America step by step, day by day. America, wake up. Washington state is a very left-wing state, dangerously so. A recent headline in Breitbart stated, quote, Washington State Bill would bar parents from intervening on child gender transitions. Democrat Governor Jay Inslee has indicated he would sign the bill. Senate Bill 5599 would allow host homes for runaway youth to house minors, quote, without parental permission. What all of this means is that if a child believes that he or she is in the wrong body and that child is seeking protected health services, that child can receive gender transition treatments without telling the child's parents. In other words, the state of Washington can kidnap your kid and mutilate your kid, and you can't do anything about it. Friends, this is criminal behavior. The government has become a totalitarian menace. Who do these legislators think they are to put their supposed concern for unknown children ahead of the natural love parents have for their own? The unmitigated gall of Democrat Governor Inslee is outlandish, grotesque, and yes, demonic in every sense of the word. It's happened many times before in world history, and it will happen in the United States of America. Pride will destroy this nation. President Biden, Governor Inslee, Education Secretary Cardona, and all those who delight in shaking their fist in the face of God, you need to repent and you need to do it very quickly. God is patient and long-suffering, and he is not willing that any would perish. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for your sins. Matthew 25, 41 says, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God's desire is that no one end up in hell, though some will spend eternity there. Once again, I say, repent. The day of judgment is very near.